Hello. How are we all doing tonight? So we're going to start in five minutes and we'll be on for about 30 minutes. So grab a cup of tea and come and join us. And we're here every Monday talking about multidimensional concepts and our thoughts and ideas and sharing hopefully hints and tips that you guys can uh, practice in your everyday and get more connected to your multidimensional self. So there's three of us every week because this week get three different views of the same problem, which I think helps you expand your awareness and your thoughts. And over the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about things like our core wounds and our, um, our soul missions and the new energies that we're sensing into. Because as the ascension process is taking place, we're noticing that there's more new things to explore and we take many soul journeys. So hopefully you can stick around for 30 minutes. I'm just going to check if we've got all our shares working properly. Yes, we do. I was just trying to use a new stand here to help me out so I don't have to look down. <laughs> yes, it's all That's right. okay. It's all good. It's all good. Okay. So this week we're going to be talking about our soul mission in a bit more detail. So I'm going to just hand over to Alicia while I do my setups here. Beautiful. Well, hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to our multidimensional musings. Uh, We're excited to be here with all of you today. Uh, last week, we shared a little bit about our soul journey in discovering uh, the new life force energy, the four dragon elementals uh, into the collective consciousness. So just wondering if anyone has had that chance since last week or watched uh, the replay and has a chance to step outside and get connecting with these new elementals. And if you have, what has been your experience? And if you have then we're inviting you to do so now to step into these four dragon elementals. Uh, the replay is on our YouTube channels if you haven't watched it just to know what we're talking about, what we were speaking about, the earth, air, water and fire dragons being the new life force energy. So we wanted to do another quick check in uh, for today and just letting us know which one speaks to you. So number one, do you create sacred space to discover your soul mission? Um, that meaning it's bright and clear and everything is aligning for you. Number two, are you taking the aligned actionable steps or are you stuck? Um, is it still a seed and hasn't fully expanded? Or is it number three, that you need uh, support in discovering your soul mission? You have a clear vision and you um, know the next actionable steps. So maybe they can enter some stuff into the, into the comments. If you're watching us live on Facebook, then enter into the comments there or onto Zoom. Then we'll be good to see what everybody's at. Beautiful. And Marta says, hello, everyone on Zoom here. <laughs> okay, perfect. So today, again, we'll be sharing about um, why discovering your soul's great vision is important and how it aligns uh, you with your best abundant life. And if you're connecting with us for the first time, my name is Alicia with my mom, Eva, co-creatrix of uh, Christine Ascension with our galactic sister, Trudy from White Star Soul Guidance. And if you're catching the live on Facebook or here on Zoom with us, uh, please do say hello in the comments or in the chat. And a warm welcome to those who are watching the replay. Do hashtag replay so that way we can come back, circle around and say hello to you as well. And uh, we invite you to join us each Monday on Facebook Live or on Zoom for 30 minutes as we continue to share our discoveries from our multidimensional soul journeys as we explore new frequencies, uh, templates and codes arriving as we walk the ascension path, living as a multidimensional being in a human body and how we're bridging those two together. So it's like that heaven onto earth for that soul ascension and human evolution. So I'm just reading a comment here. Uh, definitely seeing things more clearly for my future, but still more uncovering needed, more layers to peel. So maybe that would be number two uh, related, I would say. Was that from? <laughs> One, two, and three from Marta. Ah, uh, cool. And we've got a, a good evening from Will. So Will, how are you with your soul mission and, and knowing it and feeling it and walking it? That was the question we just asked in case you missed it. So the way we're going to go today is I'm going to, because my soul mission is helping people find their soul mission. <laughs> so we're going to start with me today. And the questions that I ask, we'll kind of do like a round table and ask Alicia and Ava. So it's a little bit less prepared. They don't know what I'm going to ask them. So it's going to be interesting to see what everybody responds this week. So what do you guys think is a soul mission is? What do you feel like a soul mission? If you had to describe it, what is a soul mission to you? Mm -hmm. So if you want to enter into the comments, and I'll give my answer first while I give Alicia and Ava some time to think about their answer. But a soul mission for me is this kind of um, 
like your higher self's guiding you through your life. And it's often things you don't know about yourself and taking you on experiences and lessons. And it's not something that comes from the logical mind. It is a kind of feeling deep within you that's pulling you through life. So that's my description of what a soul mission is. So Alicia, do you have a description or something to add to that? Yeah, I, I definitely feel that I resonate with everything that you have said there. But for me, as I was tuning in, I would definitely see it being as something that um, that my heart is communicating for me. So you would know that you're. So what was the question again? Sorry. So like what what does the word soul mission mean to you? Yeah, so it would be something that my heart is um, speaking for me. So the more I follow my heart and I know that I'm on the right or I know I'm on a soul mission because my heart is just feeling that super intertwined connection to it. And it's so sacred to me. It's so special. It's, it's, it's this beautiful um, baby that I'm actually giving birth to and that I'm going to take care of it and raise it. And that becomes my soul mission, uh, this beautiful being, this essence or this consciousness. Am I making sense? Yeah, no, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And Ava, for you, just what does the word soul mission mean to you? I think she's frozen. Froze a little bit. <laughs> okay, so I'm back. Yeah, yes. you're back. Okay. So for me, it's basically what I, what I was visualizing is basically my soul mission is I'm on a path. It's a beautiful pathway that I'm I'm growing, and each time from both my right side and my left side is expanding me in all the experiences that I do, um, and I'm loving it. Like so, like like Leisha says, but it's, for me, it's my inner self is being nurtured and my, I am growing and expanding in doing what I love and sharing it with, with everybody. So it's beautiful. It's a beautiful path and like an expansion path. That's an amazing description. So I hope you guys can see that when you watch Dave and Alicia talk about this, did you notice how the energy was kind of like upbeat and excited and they could all, they were both leaning into the camera as they were speaking. So that is a visual of what a soul mission is for me. And I know many of us have kind of gone through life with our jobs, but we'll get on to what that means. But that's the feeling of what a soul mission should feel like. But how many of us then know what the work is that we're supposed to be doing that fulfills that feeling? So that's when we get to then defining what is your soul's great vision for your life? So knowing your soul's mission and this great vision, for me, when you go through the process of discovering it, what you're actually doing is laser focusing you on how your soul wants you to live your life. You're making sacred time so that you can sit down and ask yourself, what does my soul want? Which direction does it want to go? And how do I create the feelings that we've just described now? So your soul kind of becomes the guide to your life rather than logic and society and all the other uh, family expectations, we start aiming to, to speak to our soul or our heart, as, uh, as Alicia mentioned, and ask that to guide us. And what it takes us to, because it's hard to put into words the feeling of your soul mission, is your unique frequency and your true essence, which again are very vague words, I know, but bear with us, we'll try and break that down for you to give you a feeling of what that could be for you. And what I find is when you are aligned with it, even if you don't know what it is, but when you are aligned to the feeling of what a soul mission is, it's that thing that pulls you through life. So it's almost like, like Alicia mentioned the sacred baby, you're more willing to put up stronger goals to protect it because it's a feeling and you want that feeling every day of your life. You are more willing to um, set, set kind of your goals based off of it because you want to keep that feeling so why would you pick a goal that's not aligned with that feeling you want to keep on that path and then you also want to make sure that when you have to make a decision you are choosing that feeling versus the thing in logic that you're going to step into and what this means to me is that it's vision pulling you through life rather than pain pushing you and I'm usually surprised because when I ask people what their sole mission is often what I get is a description of um, oh, I was uh, bullied as a child, therefore, you know, I'm there standing against bullying, or I was um, told I wouldn't achieve, so I'm proving that I can achieve. Those are not soul missions. Those are pains that you've had, that you haven't overcome, that you're now using as the energy to push you forward. And that's exhausting. That is not what the ladies have described for you tonight. 
So I'm just going to give you a few examples of what I did to connect more to my soul mission. And then we're going to try and break it down a bit more. So we've got Will saying he's doing very well. He's not fully aligned. He has a sole purpose for sharing the energy of the crystals, finding new guardians and realigning earth and human energies of crystal grids. So that's a lovely mission to have. And I'll be asking you all to so start thinking about what, how you describe your soul mission, because I'll be asking you in a moment what that is. So I find that to get onto your soul path, to get onto this kind of this magical pathway that we've been describing, you have to surrender to your soul as a guide. You have to get into a behavior and a habit of letting things unfold. You have to be prepared that whatever lands in front of you is either um, a success or a mistake, which is a lesson to be learned to be more successful. And you need to be able to um, observe your external world in a way that it becomes the mirror to how your internal world is doing. That's how we quantify this kind of mysterious aspect of a soul mission. So what, how would you describe your soul mission, Alicia? Okay, so now when you were speaking, I felt that I'm thinking that when you had did versus the pain versus your mission, and I feel that because the mission will feel so natural, it'll feel so natural, you won't even know you're on your soul mission, because that's what we've been discovering with, with Trudy when she was sharing all about uh, discovering our soul missions with us and guiding us. That's what I find. It's more I was already doing this. I didn't even know that it was my soul mission, but it just felt natural to me. So it didn't feel like a soul mission. <laughs> but uh, for me, I, I feel that I'm I'm guiding people who desire that soul to soul connections um, with self, with others and all relations of life, uh, including the earth and the cosmos and just really creating that fulfilling lifestyle and a, a deeper experience on earth. Um, Beautiful. And, and I say, there's no job title for that. <laughs> But I'll come back to that bit as well in a moment. How about you, Ava? Uh, for myself, I was, I help people reconnect to the vitality of being human and making a sacred space for their soul to live. So my mission has always been like to create that heaven and earth with inside of me and help. We're going to have to fill in the blank there. <laughs> you broke up. So heaven on earth. Heaven on earth, we go as far as heaven on earth. Okay, so yeah, to just to create that heaven on earth um, vitality, that aliveness, to want to be on this planet, to really fulfill their human um, existence and, and experience here on this planet that we chose to be on. And again, another description that has no job title or no single words to say. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because often our soul mission can't be really put into words unless somebody else external to you helps you or you really have a very um, like a checklist to go through to help you define it. Because it is it's you're like it's your essence is who you are. And, and half the time you need somebody outside of you to tell you this is who you are. This is what you're good at. And this is what you should be doing. And again, it doesn't matter what job you're doing. And then you take this essence into every job you do, every situation, everything Every experience, every person you meet is having that experience through you. And that's what we're trying to identify when we're looking for our soul mission. So we've got, um, so we know that Wills is his um, Christian guardian, uh, crystal guardians. What else have we got? Anything on Zoom? Uh, we had Marta say from the first question, a higher purpose. I think she was answering the soul mission. What is a soul mission? A higher purpose that drives us and makes us feel enthusiastic and excited to create. Yes. And that's so I think we're getting the hang of this. I don't know if anybody else, I'm just checking to see if anybody else is commenting on uh, Facebook, but there's not. So hopefully you get to see now that the soul mission is quite a vague kind of thing and it's more feeling than a logical description. But what I find is the more we learn how to collect the words and describe it, the more it unfolds and the more we find out about it. Like there's this really great spiritual thing that I've mentioned loads of times. It's called the Rumpelstiltskin principle that once something has been observed, it can't be unobserved. And that's kind of what we're doing by writing mission statements and doing journaling and discovering is starting to put the words together so they can start to join and form a puzzle that makes sense. Eventually, it's never straight away. Eventually, it'll unfold and we'll find out what, what the whole story is. But the thing to know about this journey is it's not a straight line. We start and it kind of goes whoosh and you do something and you think that's my new mission, I'm going to be a dance teacher. Whoosh, I'm going to be a computer programmer. Whoosh, I'm going to be a 
And then I meet so many people who have done that and then they say, I don't know what my mission is. And it's for me to then pull all the pieces out of these individual experiences and then knit it together and say, it's all of that. Because all of your life is what is going to give you the clues to your soul mission. And it's not just the successes, it's also the challenges and the mistakes that you've made because they were the learning upon which your mission was building. So you have to take the whole lot, throw it into a pot and then start pulling it apart and putting it together into the jigsaw puzzle. So just to re-emphasize what a soul mission isn't, it's not your job. In fact, your job, job technically, technically, if we, if we assume our soul, our soul mission is here to serve, serve people, whatever that serving is, your job is your first client. And I heard this this weekend and I thought this is a lovely way to put it. When you go to work, that's effectively your first client for your unique offering that you have for the world. So if you look at your job and who you are, you'll start noticing if you're aligned with your soul mission. If that work isn't aligned with your passions and your desires, then no, it's not aligned with your soul mission. But think of your job as your first client. And it's also not your qualifications, because sometimes that's driven by our parents or society as to what we should be doing and how we should be walking the path. So it's not your qualifications. And if I had to put this into a logical sense for people who are not so spiritual, I'd say it's about your soft skills. And then if we add on the spiritual skills on top of that, these are your forgotten multidimensional skills. This is like energy, sensing, holding space, being able to um, create magic by networking for people, being able to somehow just sit in a room. Like when I was, when I was a computer programmer, which is part of my story I'll tell in a moment, people used to just like me to sit next to them when they were trying to debug their code because somehow just me sitting there would mean that their problem would suddenly appear and they could fix it. Now that's a skill. And I was a joke at the time going, I should do this as a job. I'll go sit next to all the computer programmers and help them all debug their code. And all I do is sit there. So that's a skill and that's a soft skill, just to give you an example. So I think for me, my history is, again, I did the wish wish. So I started off in computing, learning computer languages. Then I moved across um, and sold the company. And I moved into learning about dance and going more into the spiritual realm because I was quite broken after the experience of the computer company. And the reason that experience broke me was because what I didn't get back then was my own value of my true essence. I was having loads of ideas, loads of like, now I can look back and say quite inspired ideas, but because I didn't value myself and that this was a gift given to me like a baby, like Alicia said, I didn't set up the boundaries. I didn't protect it. I didn't nurture it. And I didn't, I didn't proudly deliver it to the world. I'd often kind of shrink to the background and leave somebody else do it. And whilst my career was reasonably successful up to this point, I was kind of being promoted and I, was, I loved computing. It was interesting. I loved the problem solving. What I found was after the experience of the company and losing my baby, it broke my soul and it also left me burnt out because when you're working kind of, imagine I was kind of close to my life path, but not quite on it. And it felt like a struggle to constantly keep pulling myself back to who I was in the environment that I was in. So I found at that point that I needed to do some serious work on my value because at the time I probably couldn't have told you this, but now I know in hindsight that it was my value that was the core issue that was holding me back. And as we know, our value is what equates to our financial success, our abundance. Our value can have a big impact on our lives. So for me now, when I think of soul mission, the key thing I like to work on is how can I improve somebody's value of themselves so they can then go out into the world and share that value from the mountain tops, not hiding down in the, in the trenches, not knowing what's going on. So our values I like to talk about as like the first value I like to ask is what is your God or goddess skill? So I'm going to ask Alicia that question first. Okay. Um, I would say I'm the goddess of that sacred connection and communication. Beautiful. Ava? I would say I'm the goddess of encrypting the soul into the body, just weaving the soul into the body. And we know um, I call myself the goddess of divine intelligence because I feel like I can find everybody's intelligence on their soul mission and pull all the pieces together. And I'm basically a data analyst for the soul. <laughs> so guess what? My skills as a computing program, I didn't actually go to waste. All that logic, all that ability to hold all that information in my head is the skill that I use to do the work I do now when I help people see their soul purpose. 
So I think I wanted to kind of tell a, a short story. I mentioned I would sell this story. So I think the first time that I started realizing that me simply being next to somebody would cause their lives to change, I joked about it. And there was um, somebody put me onto an odd job guy who was actually a geologist that should have been working on an oil rig with his multiple PhD degrees. Instead, he was doing uh, odd jobs. And he hadn't had a job, I think he said, for like seven years or something. And he was doing some more studying to keep his skills up to date so he could get a job. And there he is with me and I'm laughing, going, oh, you're a geologist, then you must want to see my crystals. Do you know he said no? <laughs> I was like, really? <laughs> he said, they're just rocks. I'm like, no, 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 they have energy. And he goes, no, 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 they're just rocks. So I joked with him and said, okay, so if these are just rocks and if energy doesn't exist, let's make a bet. Because I know that anybody that hangs out with me and my crystals, their lives are changed. And I didn't know that. I was like messing around with him. And uh, I think I said to him, I'm guessing you'll have a job within three months. And he went, no, no, I haven't had a job for a long time. So after we finished working, we had a contact because I didn't hear from him for a while. And I thought, where's he gone? Has he got a job? Has he got a job? And I got in touch with the contact and they said, yeah, he's got a job. So he, he never... I don't think he ever stepped up and kind of accepted that it was this kind of magical moment of crystals and, and the discussions that we had. But to go from not having a job for seven years to having a job. Now, I joked about that, but now I have to take that seriously and realize that when I look back, um, anybody that I spoke to, and we call it like we're all kind of teachers or coaches when we do our soul mission effectively, we are there to deliver our messages. And as I was sharing what I knew about life or my unique frequency that I hadn't really valued at this point, people's lives were changing. So when I was teaching dance, most of my students went on to be teachers. When I was um, teaching, even now when I'm teaching spiritual things, most of those people will go on to use this spiritual techniques in their roles of teaching too. So it's getting that understanding that value is simply who you are, the frequency you emit and how you are every day. So Alicia, what story did you have that kind of started you to recognize that you had value in what you did and your soul mission? I definitely that think that you had a big part in it, number one, <laughs> in, in, in sharing or letting me see that part of that value within me. But at the same time, when I would just sometimes share with others about the connections and communications that I have with my children on a uh, earth level and a cosmic level that we are able to integrate both of these uh, together as a family in what we do. And I would share these out and people would say, oh, wow, that's amazing. I wish I had that for my family. I wish I could, con could connect with my kids that way or with others that way and, and everything like that. But for me, it felt so kind of, again, back to that natural state, you're like, oh, well, not that I would think that everyone's doing it, but I just didn't feel that there was value to it, I guess, if I was to share it with the world. So that would be my discovery. Exactly. And before I ask Ava, can everybody else think about what theirs is and start writing it in the comments? And then we, and anybody doing this after the live, then we'll come back and check anyway. So Ava, what was yours, your realization, your aha moment? Yeah, I agree with Leisha. Trudy, you really helped us, uh, you know, myself a lot too, where it comes to my value and putting my words together. We all know where I am with that. <laughs> but anyway, mine was, um, I would say the value is um, not realizing, even as, you know, in my early 20s, when I was helping, when, I, when my children were sick or, or whatnot, I would go in and um, it would come natural to me. What color I need to put it into their bellies? What do I need to do with their fingers? What, what do I need to go in and do the, the psychic surgery on their bellies to make sure that their digestion is good and everything? But it came so naturally. And then when other family members were asking me, oh, can you help me? Like, so and so is not feeling well. Can you, there's something you could do? And I didn't, I didn't take that as value at all. Like, you know, like it was just like a natural thing. So now having worked with us together it's really become valuable that i do have this skill with that i totally totally denied and even at work i totally denied it like people would always come to me um i was like you trudy like you know as long as i was there like it just like that it was like everything went well at the office the moment i went away was when all the tra trauma and the drama occurred But um, 
and you, but you didn't see it like that. You were, you just didn't value yourself and you were just a part of the, like to me, I was part of the furniture. So it's really beautiful to be expanding in that right now. Yeah. And, and this is the magic, I think, is that I don't know if anybody else has managed to think about like, what do people come to you for? and ask for advice for, or what do they say to you? Do you know you're really good at this? This is how you find this part of your soul mission. And it's only a one part of it, because we're gonna ask another question in a moment, but it's that part that you do so naturally and so beautifully in the way you hold space that you just don't even know that it's valuable. Mm -hmm. And in the new earth future that we're looking at, this is these skills are gonna become more important. I think after lockdowns and everything else that's happened, we're starting to see that having a degree in a certain topic it's not going to be as valuable as being able to manage your mental health or the person that made you feel better during lockdown or the person that led you from a job you didn't like to the job you did like. And this kind of um, coaching or changing of our skill sets is kind of happening, I think, this last two years more than ever. Some of us have had the experience of kind of like shifting and not being happy with our lives and wanting to move up. But it's starting to, to become a more more people are getting that now and starting to think about it differently. So what have we got people entering as what do people come and ask for? What do they come to you and say that you actually are good at this and you make them feel this way? You're asking me, sorry. Oh, I'm just, asking? yeah, I'm asking if there's any comments coming through. Got it. So Marta is just coming through with a comment. People have always asked me for my opinion and knowledge on different matters. Wouldn't know what that means though. Okay. Well, just start paying attention and then you'll notice, like now you're aware of it, you just start making a diary of it and then you'll start seeing the pieces will start fitting together randomly because for me even though I had a spiritual background and I was using it for my own self-development and, and health I actually wasn't I didn't think that was my sole mission I was almost like reluctant to even go into it but then I saw healing as the modalities were presented to me and I didn't fit any of those I didn't want to be a Reiki healer I didn't want to be um a coach necessarily I had like too many aspects that I wanted to weave together and it all came back to the soul for me so in 2020 I decided that this kind of like voice was like constantly talking 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 and I thought the only way I'm going to keep it quiet is if I now give up surrender and just let it lead the way so we promised that part of our understanding was about talking about the future life and I wanted to think about if you sense into who you are right now and just go into your heart and feel what does your heart tell you now? Like we've kind of set the scene. We've given you some information about what soul pur purposes are, what your missions are. Sense into your heart right now and see what does it feel like inside there? Like imagine that as a scenery you know, of your soul, soul mission. You might not see the details, but it's a feeling. Let that feeling create in your heart. And now I want you to visualize an average day in your life. Is the feeling the same? Are you getting the same excited feeling that you had when you were in your heart, when you start thinking about going to work tomorrow or what you have to do tomorrow? So if the answer is no, then you can pretty much assure that you're not completely on your life path. And there's lots of reasons why that might be so, but also, some people might say, well, yeah, I kind of like my life. And then when you dig into it a bit more deeply, they'll say, oh, yeah, because I have all these fantastic holidays. Well, good. That bit's tick. But what about the other parts of your life? Like, are you just going to work to make the money for the holidays? And therefore, that part of your life is like off and then holidays is on. Well, we don't want that. We want you on all the time to enjoy every second of your life and enjoy the process and the journey, not just the destination. So um, if you think about your life now, just ask yourself from one to 100, how aligned is your life to that feeling in your heart? And then maybe type it into the comments. And I was going to ask Alicia, how, how close do you think now your external world and your, your mission? Because obviously we're still developing it, it's still new. What, well, for you, maybe the question is more like, what step do you feel is the next step to help that alignment become more? Yeah, I think uh, I think I'm quite high in that percentage because I like now after being with you and you guiding me through that and seeing my value, I can say that I am like that. I feel fully aligned in what I'm doing now. I'm just learning how to kind of 
I don't know how to say click it all into place to boom, expand it all over. And then, then I'm in my mission. Does that make sense? Right. So I'm, I'm experiencing it already. But I'm just, how can I make that bigger and better and that beautiful legacy, I guess, uh, in a way. Beautiful. And Ava. Yeah. I'm, I would say my next step is for making more connection, making more oneness, like oneness and connection. Um, other than that, I feel that I, I am moving forward, but I was thinking this actually came up to me, I think it was yesterday, and it was the importance of connecting with people that understand you and are just on the same, not mission, the same path of, of gaining, wanting their mission to fulfill them. That's where I feel like I am right now is the connection aspect of it. Cool. And I, I want to come back to that because that's a really good point. Mm -hmm. So has anybody um, aligned, checked in the alignment with their heart? I'm not seeing anything on Facebook at the moment because these are hard questions. So I'm guessing like people are going to struggle to these. But these are the questions I ask. <laughs> and yes, I know it's not the end question because sometimes you can't answer these questions from your mind. So guess what? This is where the future life comes in. So we go off to our future. We take a soul journey to go and find ourselves in our best possible um, existence. Sometimes it's like our best possible. Sometimes it's where we'll, we want to see us doing a particular skill in its best way. But I find when we go there, we always gain more insights. We get more clarity. We get to feel it more. And, and it becomes a bigger, stronger, expanded feeling of what we're trying to achieve. So we posted on um, Instagram. We went live on Instagram um, on the 11.11 because we decided to take a future journey. So to see what we all saw on that journey, then there's a recording of that. But how, how was that? Because we've done future lives before, but how did you guys feel like, like it's not, it's not like a single journey, it evolves. So how has going to the future helped you guys understand your vision? I definitely feel that from, let's say from the start, each time I go in, it gets more expanded, more evolved. But when we were there, it just felt so exciting, so um, so aligned and it, it lights up your heart. It makes you smile. So going there is definitely a great, um, experience because you get to bring that experience back with you. So then that way it creates the path forward for you. Beautiful. Ava. Yeah, it, it definitely, it has expanded. Um, I see, I'm seeing the visions more clearly and they're actually forming like, uh, like, uh, I spoke about like I had um, um, different temperature pools, right? But today they were like figure eight pools. Oh. So it was like figure eights. And then when I was doing a meditation with somebody else earlier, I saw the figure eights of the pool coming in and it was all coded. So it is really expanding. And like they said, like the feelings are, you're, I don't want to say the word attached, right? Because that's not the word to use, but it sort of is you're becoming attached to your your future and you're yeah aligned, aligned. Yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> beginning to bring it inside of you yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's that's why we do it because when you go there and you experience it and feel it you're bringing back the frequency of it and you're recalibrating your whole body to that new frequency which then allows you to get more insights and more visions so it's a, a very good technique for helping us navigate this unknown part of what we're trying to do so we haven't got time to do a future life now, but I was thinking like normally in the new year when we're all starting to think about our new year's resolutions, maybe I'll set up a workshop then to, to take everybody on a future life to start getting more connected to their visions. But effectively, when I'm doing this work, I'm also looking at the challenges. So whilst I was starting to get on my life path and, and following this, this role, my biggest challenge was I didn't want to be seen. I didn't want to be heard. <laughs> and I did not want to be spiritual or I didn't have the language. So I felt devalued because I couldn't express my vision properly to people. And that sounds like, an, uh, yeah, it sounds like the biggest block I probably ever had to overcome. And luckily I found other coaches and mentors that helped with various parts of that so that I could then become more confident in almost like walking boldly into the unknown. It's like, I don't know where I'm going to step. No, I'm stepping anyway. Yes. Am I going to be explaining it? No, it's going to be pretty bad the first time I explain it. But if I keep practicing and practicing, then it's going to evolve and I'm going to understand better. So 
I also started noticing like the same issues were happening for similar people. Like sometimes you'd find somebody was on a soul path, but actually it was their father's or mother's soul path. So we started building these star maps. So think of star maps as just like places we know to go and check if those frequencies are interfering with somebody. And I mentioned this because we use this in some other techniques as well. But overall now, because it's coming up to the end of time, I've just seen the time. Um, what I wanted to say is that we're at a point in time where there are more unfulfilled people leaving their jobs. They're calling it like the mass exodus. I, I, there's so many people that are just retiring and leaving their jobs right now that is affecting the workforce. So there's a lot of people who are unfulfilled who need to realign with something more. But interestingly, there's more expectations of like the, um, the spiritual, I can't remember the guy's name, but the spiritual triangle that shows at the basic need level, it's like food and shelter, and it's going up. Over the last two years, we're starting to shift from this level up into this more higher consciousness living, this more soul communications, this more body vitality, this more soul aligned work, this feeling that we're serving each other, helping each other and building something rather than the kind of very separated job orientated past that we had. And I kind of think that the people that are going to create that new future for us all are going to be the creatives, the sensitives, the ones that are willing to step into the unknown, into their higher self, to bring back this new knowledge of how we can create a new earth. And for me, that's my end goal. I want to create, um, I want to enable people to be able to step into their missions and allow them to be seen, heard, valued, and to go out and deliver it so that we can start creating new structures on earth. And I heard a really interesting term the other day called high growth potential people. It said that these people are the ones who are ready. Sorry, I got wrong in my throat. <coughs> these people are the ones who are ready to take life to the next level of existence, to evolve into a higher consciousness, and they want their jobs and their life to align with this awareness. So does that sound like you guys? Are you a high growth potential person? I know that's a big title, but I've used sensitives before and empaths who I think are like a little bit, they want this, but they've got other things holding them back from being this. But do you feel that you are a high growth potential? Like, do you feel like you can move forward in life and, and want to create change? Do you have that in you? Like, I wish I could change this. or I wish that could be different. How about you, Alicia? Yes, definitely for myself. And I was uh, before I would say I was the opposite of you. I was wanting to be that spiritual and I wasn't understanding on how to bring it back down to the earth and to describe what I'm feeling, what I'm wanting to kind of, uh, what I want to create and everything else. And this, I, I was having a hard time. You've helped me put it into words of how, like that detailed thing of how I can explain it to others of what I actually desire and what my mission is. Excellent. And Ava? Yeah, I was frozen. So um, <laughs> I think I, I get the question though. Um, it was the same, like, for me, it's expression, speaking from my heart and expressing it out. I think um, Leisha and I were both wallflowers, like, you know, we would stand in the back and not come forward, right? We would just let everybody else speak. So yeah, I think working together, like, we've really, um, we're not there yet. I'm not there yet. <laughs> but, this is this but, is the fun of the journey that we're doing yes. together and helping each other hmm. but we're expanding and really diving deep into the soul and how to express it through our our voices and our um our shares our offerings yeah so i said i would share like a twist to this story because whilst we're talking about high growth potential people which is a normal term for normal people they're people who want to who have been like doing self-development work and improving themselves I think the twist to the story is that as part of our soul missions, we all have to step into our spirituality and our higher consciousness gifts. And I think more people are getting woken up to that than, they, than ever before. And they're going to struggle just like you've just perfectly described with the language. And, and I'm finding more and more, even of my, what I would call normal clients that come with normal problems, we end up at the um, oh, yeah, I kind of used to play with tarot cards when I was younger. Oh, yes, I've always had this ability to sense energy, but I never did anything with it. And I think they are going to be like the priority skills for the future. Now, everybody's talked about their great vision and how they've got this quite a good, clear vision. But I'm going to ask a really 
direct question now. So Will said he was like 73 aligned, 73% aligned. Mm -hmm. So if we're all so aligned with our soul mission, how abundant are we right now? How much money have you all got in the bank? And I can guess that many of us who are walking our soul missions in this kind of serving way are not doing as good in the bank from that as we were from our earth jobs before. Mm -hmm. And then how many of us feel stuck in actually getting to the point of that flow of abundance coming through to match the size of the mission that we're trying to deliver? Or the momentum behind delivering that mission to more people so we can get more buy-in? How many people feel blocked to that kind of stuff? I don't know if Will is still with us. Got any answers coming through on Zoom? No, other than uh, Martha was 51% aligned before, but no new. Uh... So what we noticed, and this is the twist for us, is that, and one of the reasons we got together was, one, to help us understand the language, because now my soul missions were moving into these much, much softer, uh, multidimensional skill set, and I needed to learn the language, which I didn't have, which surprisingly, Alicia could explain between the two of us, it was like having two different languages, but between us, we managed to translate it. And my physical body wasn't in terrible alignment either, which Ava has been helping me with. So as well as that kind of synchronicity between what we do, what we've also been doing was we all sat down and said, you know what, we've got amazing messages to give out. Why can't we make abundance from this, like serious abundance? And we get together every week and hold abundance sessions where we start talking about it. And what's become really obvious to us is how many people are being held back from living their best life using their multidimensional skills because they have past memories of being um, enslaved, manipulated, or penalized for using their spiritual skills. So on one hand, you've got all these people who want this self-development, who want to step forward, who want to change the earth. On the other hand, it's almost like our soul essence that's returning to our body is going, yes, and you're going to do that with all these fabulous spiritual skills. And then we've got, but <laughs> you've been penalized. You've been, do you really want to do this holding us back? So whilst we've each got our own unique uh, abilities, what we found is that the common theme underneath is a whole bunch of spiritual core wounds that need to be fixed. So regardless what your spiritual or your, your soul mission is, then you may want to look at, check out our humans, um, Stardust Being Human series because I think this is the kind of what sums up this energy of bringing our spiritual skills and our higher consciousness abilities into the human body and see if that aligns with you. Because a lot of what we're finding is when we put people through this program, they are coming out feeling changed, even if they didn't know the spiritual, like we're not talking about you all becoming healers. We're talking about you embedding spiritual skills into your jobs, whatever that job is, finding your unique frequency and your value taking the job that values you, being seen here, acknowledged, you know, all these great things, feeling empowered to choose your path aligned with what you're, either you know you're here to deliver. And yet underneath all the skills that you need to do that are being blocked. And for us, we started looking at, because we were looking at abundance, because if abundance wasn't coming in, we were then, well, our value can't be as high as we expected if the abundance that's around us isn't meeting our value. And that's when we started developing the Stardust being human series so we do have um, a workshop coming up on december 11th and i'm going to hand over to alicia now to tell you about that so yes uh the start with us being human series is a beautiful uh four hour soul journey recalibration in uh letting go of those um core wounds as a treaty was speaking about of manipulation and slavery and really aligning uh to a new truth of that spiritual liberation uh template and i've heard since we've uh introduced the spiritual liberation i've seen a lot more people use that word spiritual liberation so i think everyone's uh getting more in tune with this but this is where we bring it in to the physical body we take you through a, a beautiful truth temple and we basically integrate this new truth into the physical body so that way it expands your um and i would say accelerates your soul uh soul ascension and human evolution because we integrate movement into our um journey so this again is on uh, sunday december 3rd four hours hmm? sunday the 11th i don't know why i keep saying the third <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you. All right, then. So again, Sunday, December the 11th. 
I think somebody else, I told somebody else, it's December the 9th. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, time's jumping all over the place right now. <laughs> Multidimensional being here. All right, then. So Sunday, December 11th for our uh, journey. Uh, it starts at 10 o'clock a.m. EST, which is again, what is it, GMT? Just Three. Three o'clock GMT. And uh, the we're offering it... Um, for 111 pounds, but not only until uh, the end of November, November 30th. And then after that, it goes up to 144 pounds. But this is just for 2022. After that, in the year 2023, we're going to value ourselves and raise it to 444 pounds. So um, do get in touch with us. And included in the bonus, we feel is a really great bonus. So for the 111 pounds by November 30th, you get to um, step into our a portal memberships for a whole month, which are all about soul journeys, soul exploration with uh, Trudy's expertise, and then the expertise of uh, soul expansion and anchoring that into the physical body and all about abundance. Um, and then you also get with included in the bonus is a follow up. And that's usually I know we're getting close to Christmas after that, but it is 10 days after. And that's when we do our check ins and to see how you're integrating this new spiritual liberation template. And also you can join join for a second time. And if you're joining for a second time, we offer that at 50% uh, off. So if you join for the 111 and you want to dive in uh, next year, it'll be half off that uh, price just to go deeper. Because sometimes we even had uh, someone fall asleep during the soul journey. So if you want to step in fully awake um, and experience at a deeper level, you can also do that as well. Uh, Marta says, I'll be there. Can't wait. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and I, th I think also like, because each time, like, cause we're, we're constantly working out these star maps. We're constantly working out what's the new, like new trick to un undo, or what's the new block we found. We're adding these to it as well. So if you, if you sign up now and you repeat it next year, you're not just getting the same soul journey. There's going to be new elements added in. We think it's going to turn into like a two day thing eventually. And I think this is where, I'm kind of slapping myself because I know this. I know that when I start something, the value is going to be much higher than I anticipate. And why am I still <laughs> going? No, it's just a it's just a three hour workshop became a four hour workshop became an oh, my God, this is a spiritual liberation concept. This is huge. This is not only a spiritual liberation, but it's what is needed in order for us to connect with money, because we need that if we want to use if we are spiritual people, which we all are, then we need to clear that so that we can then earn the money that represents our values. So it's kind of like all intertwined and it's all coming together beautifully in these workshops that we're doing. So I hope somebody can uh, put the, the dates in their calendar and join us. That'll be really cool if you can make it. But, um, oh, we got Will saying, Dot has a birthday party to go to that day. I'm very tempted though. <laughs> uh, honestly, Will, you, I, and I don't like bragging, so this is really hard for me to say, but it is pretty amazing what we do. It's, we had to extend it from three hours to four because we put so much into it. There's so many contracts and vows and um, but mindset beliefs and um, emotional release that we go through. And then we even kind of create a whole new future for you with the money. And so you can see how it's kind of like we said, you know, going to the future is a great way to, to tie you into your soul mission. We put all of that into that one four hour session. So it's a, a whole end to end story. Beautiful. Marta, I really recommend it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Are we there? Yep. All right. Thank you for sharing your time with us. If there's anything you would enjoy us to speak about, please put it in the chat. And I'm going to share three ways for you to stay connected with us. Number one is a Stardust a Series Being Human. We have an early bird running till the end of November. December, we are sharing spiritual liberation for beating yourself up because that's one of the core wounds that we have to remove for anything to really happen in our life. Number two, come join us on Facebook at Higher Conscious Living, stepping boldly into the unknown, which we will leave the link below. And number three, we do multidimensional Mondays weekly. So there are videos within the Higher Consciousness Living Facebook group where you can view some of our past videos. And the best part is that if you opt for a ticket to our next multidimensional Monday, you can stay with us. Uh -huh. <laughs> after we say goodbye to the Facebook Live, where we will have a Q. What? 
You, Did you, I freeze? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's assume every time you freeze, you're just off in another dimension. She goes to Shambhala. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Where did I leave off? The point was you were making that you could stay with us. If you get a oh, yeah. on Zoom, oh, yeah. a sauna longer, uh, obviously in that sacred space. <laughs> That's right. So that we could just have a quick chat and get to know each other uh, better. So we will leave the links below for one, two, and three to make it super easy for you to stay connected with us. Beautiful. I love that. Because we're all learning. We're all still practicing. And that's why we share so you guys can see that, you know, we're trying to share how we generally are struggling or learning and our challenges so that you can see it's not all, it doesn't just pop out of a can. It's like my soul mission and this is it in the can. No, it's an evolution. It's a journey. And everything we teach is about helping you walk that journey gracefully and confidently and valued and enjoying the experience of discovering who you are, what your mission is, how to have more better sort of soul to soul communication and how to have a better vitality in your body. And mm -hmm. next week, Alicia is going to share more about her work. And the week after, Ava is going to share more about her work. So hopefully you guys can join us for that. But in the meantime, sorry, guys, I've, <laughs> I've had a, a rough day. And today I've kind of overgone a bit on time and we're not quite as organized. So I hope you forgive us. And we'll say goodbye to the Facebook Live people. And yes. we'll stay and chat with our Zoom. Excellent. I'm just going to say bye, everyone. Bye.